Today we are doing a little bit of bank fishing. I really like to keep it simple when I'm fishing extremely cold water. I don't like to pack a ton of lures. I think that the water is somewhere in the low to mid 40s. I actually forgot my little hot tub thermometer that I usually bring with me, but I've got one rod, one reel, and a few baits. As you can see there, I got a good old jig. This is a Strike King Bitsy Bug. It's a quarter ounce jig. I got a Zoom Chunk trailer on there. This is something that's very simple. It works really well no matter how cold the water is. But let's try to get some cold water bass. This video is brought to you by SportsmansOutfitters.com. One thing about Sportsman's Outfitters this week is they're having their huge Black Friday sale. So you can get the best prices that you're going to find all all year long on your favorite baits, your favorite rod, your favorite reel, your favorite line at the best price right now. So guys, click that link down below in the description and you can pick up some of your favorite lures for the best price so that you can fish them throughout the winter and all through next year. Now back to the video. I know that it may not look that cold right now, but on the way over here, I saw 37 degrees in my truck i hate fishing when the air temp is below freezing because then you just have a ton of issues with ice on your rods and you can try all the little crisco tips and this and that but to be honest like it's just it's just the laws of nature even if it's 33 or 34 like it's it makes a big difference on just being able to be out and fish and not have to worry about everything just freezing there's a few baits that i like and a jig is one of my favorites. And the reason why I choose it, you know, bank fishing is just cause it, it tends to come through a lot of cover that's down there. You don't always know what you're going to get into, whether that's rocks, brush, a little bit of grass, whatever it may be. And that jig can come through that stuff really, really well for the most part. I like a quarter ounce jig this time of the year, a very small jig, very light in weight. And here's the thing is that when that water gets cold, the bass don't always need a big meal to keep going. If you think about it, if a bass eats a bluegill during the summertime, that bluegill may only give that bass like enough calories, enough energy for a day. But during the winter, when that water is super cold, because bass are cold blooded, the bass metabolism slows down a lot. So that same size bluegill during the winter might actually last a bass a week. The bass are just simply not eating as much during the winter. Now, the one thing that is important to know is that usually when you catch one, there can be multiples in the same area. I think I got one. Oh gosh, that gummit. How the heck did he miss that thing? You know, what I'm focusing on here is some of the steepest banks on this particular body of water. And you may not always know this when you go to the body of water that you are fishing. You know, one easy way to do that is cast your lure out there, count it down, and obviously the ones that take longer to get to the bottom is going to be deeper water. You know, and basically right now, I'm trying to find some of the deeper water on this lake, but I'm working the bait from deep water up to shallow water. And again, that's important because the bass can be shallow, they could be deep, they could be a little bit everywhere. But that's really what I'm focusing on right now. Oh, there's there he is. Got him. Got him. Oh, jeez, not a big one. Not a big one at all. That's maybe why. I, maybe that's why I missed him the first time. It's because he's so small. <sighs> well, I don't care. A bass is a bass. It's still fun. Let's let him go. See you, buddy. I got interrupted by that fish, but this is exactly what I'm trying to do. I know that this bank is about 12 foot of water. It just kind of drops off into about 12 foot of water, which is about the deepest on this particular body of water. So I'm literally casting out into that 12 foot of water. I'm slowly dragging this bait up. The big thing is just being slow, being methodical. And when you get a bite, really work that area over because there might be more than just one fish in that area. Oh, there's another bite. Got him. That's a better fish there. Oh, that's a lot better fish. Oh yeah, oh gosh. It's exactly what I was just talking about, guys. Gotta work that area over. Oh gosh, that is a good one. 
Golly, what the? Come here, fish. Come here. Come here, fish. Come here. Top that. Golly, decided to get strong. I've only got about 12 pound test on right now, so I want to be easy. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, yeah. Let's freaking go. Look at that. That's about a four pounder right there. Just got this nice bass right here. Solid fish in that exact same spot. Man, I was, I was expecting to catch some small ones, hoping to catch one like this. Just awesome to catch it already. Golly, what a beautiful fish. Thanks, buddy. You made my freaking day. All right. See you, buddy. Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> he was like, get me out of here. I wanted to go over my equipment real quick because I think equipment is really important when you're fishing really small jigs like the one here. Again, I have a quarter ounce Bitsy Bug jig by Strike King. They have one that has a bigger hook in it. It's called their Flippin' Bitsy Bug. And if you're using really heavy pound test, that's the one I go with. Now, I actually like the lighter wire one in these cold water situations. And on the back of this jig, I have a Zoom Super Chunk Junior. I believe this is the two inch model. And you know, I keep things simple. I like a green pumpkin or like a green pumpkin blue jig with a green pumpkin chunk on it, that Super Chunk Junior. Or I like a black and blue, like the one I'm fishing here today with a black chunk on it. You know, I like to keep it simple, simple, simple. And I have 12 pound line. The reason I'm fishing 12 pound line with a jig is one, it's a small jig too with using such a small jig using that smaller diameter it just lets that bait look a little bit more natural if you're using 17 pound test 20 pound test on a jig like this it's not as natural the way that it falls the way that it glides down there so that's why i use 12 pound test i got a seven foot medium heavy action rod and a eight one to one gear ratio reel this is actually the akuma TCS all-purpose rod. Love this rod for a lot of things. Love it for these little finesse jigs. That little fish was in the deep water. It was almost towards the end of the cast. But that bigger fish was actually up that little lip there. Like I had brought that bait up quite a ways. I bet he was only sitting in, in five foot of water at most. So again, you know, this water being mid forties, maybe a little bit lo lower, those fish, as long as there's deep water close by, they can still be pretty shallow. So just keep that in mind. That's so important. Big thanks. I just want to thank you guys for just always tuning in and watching these videos as well as kind of supporting the, the fin fishing endeavor that I've started. If you missed that, I talked about it on my last video, but uh, I got some sweatshirts coming in the very near future that I'm pretty pumped about. I would definitely love to have one on right now. So I will leave that down in the description as well, finfishing.com. Oh, there's a bite. What the heck? It's got to be small or something. Yeah. What the heck? Man, they are just, they are wanting it so slow. I mean, I'm just dragging this thing slow on the bottom. Sometimes I'm making some small hops. I'm feeling some random brush down there and, and things like that. So every now and then when I get around that, I'm hopping it over. And But for the most part, I'm just being slow. That's a fish. That's another big one, I think. Or it's a, no, yeah. golly. It's another fish though, woo -hoo. Man, that fish, I thought I was hung up on the moss on the bottom. Like he just started swimming away. Look how ghost white those things. I mean, they just, you can just kind of tell that these fish are fairly inactive. Man, that was fun though, still. He felt really, really big at first. Now, one thing that's extremely important to know is that this particular body of water that I'm fishing used to be an old quarry. So most of the bottom here is either clay or rock. It's a fairly hard bottom, but a lot of lakes across the country, a lot of ponds across the country have a pretty silty, muddy, or mucky bottom. So I fish the exact same lure when I fish both those different types of body of water. The biggest difference though, if I'm fishing in that muck, I'm doing a lot more small hops like this 
then I am dragging the bait across the bottom. Those fish will get close to that mud and muck, but they don't always like to pick baits off of that mucky bottom. So my parents' pond growing up, this is, I remember a couple of days in the middle of February where we would have random 50 degree days and, and the ice would get off the pond and I would do this exact same thing and catch bass. But the big difference there, they had a mucky, muddy bottom and I had to do small hops. And that's how I'd catch the fish as opposed to what I'm doing here today, which is more or less dragging this slowly on the bottom. Something else that's extremely important during the winter, I'm using a chunk style trailer as opposed to a crawl style trailer that has a lot of movement. And again, with the water temperature being cold, I don't want a lot of vibration. I don't want a lot of movement. So I always go with that chunk style trailer in cold water. I really can't tell you how critical it is to have that deep water close by. I worked down the bank here a little ways and I just wasn't getting the bites. And I also noticed when I was casting, my lure would go down about a four to six count. So I would count, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, it would only go four or six. Over here, it was 10 and 12 and 13 counts. So obviously it's deeper over here and you just have to have that deeper clo water close by when you're fishing this cold stuff. So there's a big part down there. I'm not even gonna fish. I'm just gonna try to concentrate and work really methodically through this deeper stuff. We're back up to where I caught that big one and that other one. And literally in this pretty much about 50 yard, not even 50, 40 yard stretch right here, this is where that deeper water really comes close to the bank. And I got maybe five bites through this, the first pass. And then I worked another hundred yards down the shoreline without a single bite. So that just goes to show you how important that depth is. So hopefully we can get us another big one or even just a fish. I don't really care. I just, it's so cold that you just gotta, you gotta take what you can get. That big one was a blessing. There's a fish. Not a big one. Another fish though. Oh gosh. Dude, I'm telling you what. That that is oh what the oh he just freaking pooped all over me, you big dummy. Dad it. Look at that. Sitting here fishing a crawfish, and that guy's got shad tail in his stomach don't have any swim baits with me though oh sorry little guy there he goes that fish was not sitting in deep water he had to have been he was way up this slope i mean he had to have been in in four or five foot of water at most but he was next to the deep water oh there's another bite Oh gosh, that might be a better one. No, I don't think so. Dude, we land, this is, oh my gosh. I know they're not huge guys, but this is so much fun. Golly, oh my gosh, these fish are freezing though. I mean, they are cold to the touch. That little jig so much fun this is this is exactly what i was just talking about though i already fished through this area came back here and literally starting to catch them again you got to have that deep water close by and again deep water is going to be relative to the body of water it might only be four foot of water where you are fishing the pond that you're fishing in but you got to have that deep water some ponds have dams on them and that's that'll be your deepest water close by you know and some ponds are just the deepest out in the very middle of the pond so you just kind of have to cast around get a feel for it and figure it out we could go around this entire lake and you may not catch a fish but in the same exact cast i catch four that's how critical area is in the winter in cold water if you're in the right area you can get bit but there's a lot of dead water There he is. That fish was on there for a while. Oh gosh. Just a little guy. Oh, sorry buddy. 
Well, we just got back to the truck and I need to get in the truck because I'm freezing. But if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy this video that I did right here also on cold water fishing. And don't forget to check out the links down below for Sportsman's Outfitters. Again, they're having a huge sale right now. Subscribe to the channel, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.